When an angler embarks on their journey through a lifetime of fishing, a few things happen. A vision is created, a vision inside their minds, one that becomes the driving force of that individual from that day forward. A vision that includes, at times, an unrealistic expectation of what their dream trip or dream fish just might look like, and what it will take for them to reach the climax of that vision or expectation. A wise man once told me that expectation is killjoy. I couldn't agree more in most situations, but as a fisherman, what else do we have to live for? What else drives us around the next bend and out of our comfort zone to find that trophy fish of a lifetime, and to push forward to better ourselves as anglers and humans so that one day that vision might become a reality. Trophy fishing is much more about the adventure, friends, and memories made along the way than it is the fish we pull from the water. In today's log, we chase this vision. What happens next is for you to find out. This is the hunt for Trophy Browns. So here we go, morning number one. I checked the weather a little bit before we came out here, so that was semi-prepared for what we were gonna be seeing as far as weather goes and temperature, and I don't think anything could have prepared me for what we were about to endure next. And the hunt begins. The Midwest has blessed us with some, some balmy weather. What do you say, Bailey? <laughs> I think he's kind of laughing at us, Northwesterners. The Midwesterners always do because we think this is cold. 17 degrees this morning, but that's perfect conditions for what we're hunting for. Big browns, man. Big browns. We came all the way out here, you guys, in search of giant brown trout. And then the Midwest is one of the only places in the U.S. you can find fish of this caliber. And so we hit up Bailey, he hit us up. I don't even know how it went, it doesn't matter. We, we're here, we're here, and we're freezing our butts off. The goal today, and the next few days is going to be to find a fish of trophy caliber. To me, a trophy is what you make it. There really is no defining of what exactly a trophy fish is, but I have never caught very many big brown trout. And so anything is gonna be a trophy to me, but there is calibers of fish in this river and in the rivers we're gonna be fishing that are up into that giant range, 10, 15, 20 pounds even. I you know Bailey's caught some giants over the years. So all we can do is cast and hunt and fish and cast and hunt and fish. And clean some ice off the guides. Yes, it's already happening. Everything's already frozen. Let's do this. Yep, got him. What do you got, what do you got? Oh, it's a brown, it's a brown, isn't it? Yep, big brown. Nice brown. Big brown. Very nice brown. Everybody? I'm sitting here like a like a little baby warming my fingers up from the man himself. Third Second, cast. Third, third cast it was. Third cast. Throws a little spawn sack over there. So it's obvious, I think, with the cold weather. But it might be a might be more of a, a actual scent bite. Yeah, scent. Something that is more natural, like a bead or or some sort of spawn sack like this. That's a good fish. Oh my goodness. This is a really good fish. The very first fish of the trip is already like trophy quality. Oh wow, that's a good fish. Look how chunky she is. Oh my God. Big old female. Come on, George. Come on. Oh, come on. You know you want it. Come to Papa. To soy Papa. Wow. What a beautiful fish in that freaking morning light. Uh-uh. Stay down. Stay down. She's a little, she's got an attitude, everybody. She's got charisma. This one's got a personality. That can be beat. Oh, come on, right there. Oh, <laughs> got her, dude. <laughs> Holy shnikes. Okay. Look at this thing. They do not get much bigger than that. Wow, everybody. Watch, watch your right. I was seriously, I was sitting here just enjoying the sunrise. We just rode into this hole. He said, this is a good one. We want to be ready here. And I was, it was just like total bliss, total bliss, just chilling watching the sunrise, watching the bobber float on the third cast, and we were blessed with a true giant. Let's check this thing out. Wow. I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually kinda glad. I hate to say this, this is such a, a terrible remark, but I'm kinda glad I didn't catch this fish so I didn't have to stick my hands in the water right now. <laughs> Dude, heck of a job, man. Third cast, grab that thing. All right, boys. 
What an incredible specimen of a fish. I've never seen anything like that. Wow. What a special fish, man. Well done. Let's let her go. It's really cold, guys. We're not trying to keep this fish out of the water at all. Dude, what a blessing. Oh, she goes. See you later, honey. Yes, dude, give me some. Bring it in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice job. First fish of the day. Absolute trophy. I wonder how this is. It could be the bingo fish. We've talked about the bingo fish before, and that's when you hook a fish like the first cast of the day, and then you don't touch one the rest of the day, but I don't know. That was awesome. Fish number one is an absolute giant. And I think deep down is a little bittersweet, but I'm glad that Bailey hooked this fish instead of me because as an angler and as somebody on this trophy hunting trip like this, I think it would almost been too bittersweet to hook this fish that fast into the trip. It's third cast, first hole, I mean, that would have been too easy. That's not the point of chasing trophy fish is to have it come to you so easy. So Bailey, heck of a job, incredible fish, and what a way to start the trip. So is that, that seems like a pretty above average fish. What's that, what's that look like for what we might see today or on this trip? I'd say that's about, yeah. These fish are different in your classes, three, three year old, four year old, five year old fish. I'd say that was about a four or five year old fish. So um, they do get pretty darn old. And do they, are they repeat spawners? Do they come back and forth? Cause these are a sea run strain you said, right? Yeah, sea for Allen Brown, otherwise known as a sea run. Um, originally from like Chile area or. Um, Argentina. Yeah. and Interesting. Um, like the Greenland area, Norway, North gotcha. Atlantic. Gotcha, gotcha. Of course, every fisherman asks everybody, if you travel and fish, you ask these goofy questions to your guide the whole time, wondering how many there are, when they come back, and how easy it is to catch them, <laughs> you know? But like, like you said, we just said a minute ago, the bait that that thing ate, it's really hard to actually target the giants. Yeah, it's not like we're fishing, you know, a six inch addicted worm out for wild steelhead. Right. that are super aggressive. These fish, when it gets cold like this, this morning it was 15, 16 degrees when we woke up. It was 17 when we launched the boat. And I'm sure it's still below 20 right now. Um, that fish ate a spawn sack that had only four, four eggs in it. Um, there really is no way to target these big fish, in my opinion. You just gotta catch as many as possible and hope you get a big Keep one throughout the day. Crossed. Luckily, <laughs> we got one third cast of the day, first fish, so. We, we got the one we were looking for, now we just need one bigger than that. Yes, sir. Oh! I can't feel my leg. <laughs> I'm panicking. I want to see what our net looks like. <laughs> That's real nice. Well, the sun has come out, and that is the nice thing, if there isn't any nice thing about fishing a 10 degree wind chill, is uh, as soon as the degree goes up one degree, or as soon as the day heats up one degree, it's so cold I can't even talk everybody. As soon as it gets one degree warmer throughout the day, you notice it. So the sun just broke through, we finally had the courage to get out of the boat and go to the bathroom. And we have a lot of river to go. It's been an absolutely incredible morning with three casts. Thank you. But there's so much more adventure to go. We have a long, we're floating about eight miles today. So we're covering a ton of water. It's gonna be daylight till dark. And things are gonna change as we go down the river with every single corner. So I can't wait to see what's here. There's fresh steelhead, there's trophy browns, and our fingers are getting warmer. So things are looking up. What do you think, should we throw some anise on that thing? On the spinner? Yeah. Don't threaten me in the good time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't you dare threaten me with a good time. He asked if I wanted some anise sent, everyone. And I said, yes, let's do it. Oh, little, oh little God, guy sauce. even got the right stuff. I'll put a little bit on the body here. If it comes out, because it's probably frozen. Uh, there we go. <laughs> it's cold. There's no wind here, though. I'm going to suck it up. It feels pretty nice. Yeah, first cast, 100%. Here we go. Come on, big brown. Taking big brown to town. Oh. 
Oh, got him. Huge one. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That was so epic, everybody. I just felt him pick it up a second ago. And he chased it down and came out of nowhere. I don't know if you guys could have seen that on the camera. But that was absolutely insane. Oh, my God. That's a huge brownie, too, brother. That's a big brown on a spinner, everybody. Yes. Holy shnikes, this fish, guys, is huge. It's huge, and it destroyed the spinner. Oh my God, look at the colors of this thing, you guys. Holy moly, holy. Okay, ready? No time this time. No time. Holy, oh my God, don't do that. Nice. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes world. That is a big brown, dude. Woo. That truly couldn't have gone any better. What an epic and vicious spinner take. One of my very favorite ways to catch fish anyways with the spinner, but let alone in the conditions with the lighting the way it was, just the, the sound of the water, the sound of the trees, everything was so perfect. And the way that that fish sideswiped that lure, I'm gonna be seeing in my memory for a long, long time. Wow, everybody, I gotta take my gloves off for this and I am not looking forward to it. It hasn't warmed up a ton but enough to make him eat a spinner. Oh man, I'm shaking everyone, I'm shaking. Here it is, ow, look at that fish. What an incredible looking fish, so cool looking. All right, man. Thank the creator for that one. I think she deserves a kiss. Mwah. Wow. See you later, sweetie. It tastes like beer and cheese. <laughs> Go ahead, big mama. Oh, right back into the net. <laughs> she wants to hang out with us a little bit longer. Wow. Well, we came a long ways for that fish, dude. Bring it in. Thanks, brother. Good work. Yeah. Thank you, world. Thanks for joining on this adventure. What a cool experience. The way that fish took that spinner was absolutely perfect. Everything about it was perfect. Followed it, hit it once when it came out of the logs. Followed it, dude, it's the total T-Rex style side swiper. Just wham, killed it. Dude, that one didn't go 20. And my hands are dead. Look at, they're already frozen. Wow, how awesome. What a beautiful place. He didn't feel it though, dude. He didn't feel it. He's even bigger though. He's right there. I see him. He's gonna eat again, dude. He did not feel it. Oh my god. I wish I wouldn't have seen him. Oh my god, that was huge. That was definitely the boyfriend. Oh my god, I got a bigger one. He didn't feel it though, dude. He didn't feel it. Oh my god. I'm not gonna stop. I'm, I'm gonna be dreaming about that one. I can see his freaking schnauzer from this. Oh my god, I can't even talk. It's too cold. I'm immobilized. Okay, I'm throwing a coaching jig. Addicts, that was such a heartbreaker. The fish of the trip, honestly, when you think of that iconic, massive brown trout, a lot of us anglers out there, anybody who's caught these things before, think of that big, giant, kite-nosed, gnarly looking buck. And that's exactly what grabbed my hook and then quickly spat it out here. I'm not gonna forget seeing that fish for a long, long time. Okay, here it goes. First ever on, on video. Throwing a, a new addicted tail out twitcher for this giant brown in front of us. We know he's here. There's probably, so there's about four or five super, super fresh spawning beds right above us. And that's what these fish are coming in to do. They're just like steelhead where they come in, spawn, and then they bail. Some of them stick around for quite a while, like Bailey was saying. But these ones here, obviously, were just adjacent to these beds in this deeper water, so there's I'd say a couple fish per per bed, usually usually two per bed, at least one female per bed. So I'm sure there's about five or six, ten. Heck, who knows how many fish sitting in this hole. There he was, dude. I just hooked one. Come back for it. Oh my God, that was cool. 
We are probably exactly halfway right now. And it is 12 o'clock. So we got four hours. We're looking pretty good then, huh? Yeah. Four and a half. Last light is at like 4.47. Last light tonight. <laughs> you can go to hell with that. Let's yeah, we'll be curds. we'll be knee deep in a thing a of cheese soup. curds at last light. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Need even a thing of cheese here. It's a poutine, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right at the boat, dude. We're right at the boat. Oh my god. <laughs> I think it's the old coho. It kind of looks like. What is it? It's a coho. No, oh, it's a steelhead. No, oh, it's a coho. It is, it is, yep. It's like we're fishing out west, man. Man, look at this <laughs> variety. Jeez. Look at this thing. So neat. I was just blathering, just sitting here talking and chatting with everybody, not even paying attention, just straight up reeling in. And what do you look? A beautiful little head coho in not bad shape either. Oh, you can just pop the loose if you want. Man. Hell yeah, dude. Just just stopped rowing. I had to row to warm up a little bit. <laughs> Toss the spinner out. Was not paying attention. That's my kind of fishing right there. Well, if it wasn't cold enough, we struck an iceberg, Captain. We're gonna have to beat our way through this ice field to get to the takeout. What an incredible day it's been. The old mother nature made us work for it today but accomplished a goal that we came a long way to accomplish and it worked out flawlessly. Thank you so much, Bailey, for putting us on today. It's time to get some food. I got a really cool little thing in mind for you guys. We're gonna go to a special place in town that has some of my very favorite snacks for the next couple days. Let's get the heck out of here. The one thing the Midwest is extremely famous for and they take a lot of pride in and then if you guys didn't know, I actually was born in North Dakota. I only lived there for a very short time as a baby, but I've been out in the Pacific Northwest ever since. But all my family that still lives in the Midwest prides themselves on their meats, their dried meats, and of course, the cheese. So the first thing I asked Bailey the minute we met up with him is, one, what's the best meat market in town? And two, where do I find the squeakiest cheese curds? And he knew just the spot. Well, everyone, there's one thing I always know in every place it is that you go fishing, there's one kind of snack token to that area and to that culture and where the roots for those people come from and one here in the midwest is sausage and cheese so my friend here has brought us to the proud wisconsin cheese place and we're gonna go get some munchables i love cheese curds my family's from the midwest so i grew up on good dried meat and good cheese so we're going shopping <laughs> oh, i'm in heaven van dieger my absolute favorite that one. That one for sure. Um, let's get like. Or let's get ten. <laughs> no, just ten sticks, please. We found the cheese. Oh, look at it all. It's so beautiful. It almost bring a tear to your eyes, eh? Guys, what do I get? We got string cheese. This is the weirdest string cheese I've ever seen in my life. But I, will, I love it. Come on. We got some fresh cheese curds. We got some Cajun, Cajun cheese curds. Bacon barbecue. I'm drooling all over myself. Bacon barbecue? What? Oh my god. What have we gotten ourselves into? It's all eaten. Thank you. Give the bill squeakiest. Indeed. Wow. You want to know a real Midwestern trick? Yeah. Wisconsin specifically. Yeah. Take like your portion that you're going to eat, put a bowl in the water, and put it in the microwave for like 15 seconds. It makes it even squeakier. The extreme squeak. Yes. Almost makes you go deaf. I heard a guy went deaf one time. Uh, <laughs> it's like deaf news. Yeah. Nice.
Well, good morning everybody. New place, same mission, and that is find another trophy brown trout. Yesterday was an incredibly perfect day. We got two amazing fish given the conditions, but today we're still battling the cold, dude. It's still cold. It's not as cold. It's almost 30 degrees right now, which sounds pretty nice compared to yesterday. But the river is actually freezing up. We came a little bit further north to try to do some walking today. We're gonna try to hit this on foot. We might end up going back to the raft, but I don't know yet. You're gonna have to stick around and figure out where today goes, because we don't even know. The river's icing up. <clears throat> the whole lower echelon on this river is completely shelved over. I don't even know how much of it we're gonna be able to fish. So we're gonna get our Lamborghinis warmed up, hit the river, and see if we can find some fish this morning, dude. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. So we're not just testing it, we're trying to get rid of this ice. This is one of the holes that he wants to fish. And so what you have to do, obviously because the shelf ice is working out, is get rid of this ice so we can even land a fish. So look at this giant ice bug. Ice bug, Captain! He's chunking this thing out and getting it away so that if we do hook a big fish, we can bring it in, bring it over to the bank and actually get it to us without having to go out there in a dangerous area or spook those fish away. So necessary evil, I guess. we've all been waiting for. That shelf's gonna screw us, but if you can, try and get one on the other side even. What's that, what's that? That, that was a fish, it. that was a fish. First cast. First cast, out here schmucking me. Oh, he's got a pop sack, ladies and gentlemen. Dang it. Yep, good fish. Oh, yeah. He's a head slinger. That's a big tail. That thing's got a big tail and a big head. We got one, boys and girls. Looks like a nice, pretty steelhead, actually. Oh, a gorgeous steely. Come on, Gordon, get the net. Cool colors on that thing. Wowzers. First. Steely of the trip. Yeah, baby. Look at how rainbowy that thing looks. Holy shnikes. Wow, dude. That's a good way to start the morning. Chunking out the ice. Casting. First cast, he got one of the first casts. I was kind of fiddling around, obviously not getting in the zone. And he comes back through in about the third cast. Again, just like yesterday morning, these fish are all kind of locked in these holes. There's not a lot of places for them to go. Yep. So, he knew the spot, he knew the fish, and look at what we got. What an incredible steelhead, dude. Such a cool looking fish, very rainbowy. Yes. Some of the most rainbowy steelhead I've seen in the Great Lakes so far. Beautiful colors on her cheek there. What a special fish. All right, see you later, sweetie. Let's go, girl. Be free. Bye-bye. Dude. <laughs> you start the morning. Numb hands and wet elbows. That's how Woo. you know you're having a good day. What was that, world? <laughs> Did Jordan have a sling in a miss? I don't know. It went under very subtly. That was just deepened up a smidge, too. Not a skill, it's more of a snake. Time to hit the old dusty trail. So as we started tromping up river, I really started to soak in the scenery and think about where we were in this place. You know, we, we do a lot of these traveling trips here to Dickon. Thanks to you guys, of course, for watching these videos and getting us the encouragement and the enthusiasm to go do this stuff. But it, it kind of set in the tone as we started to walk of where we were and, and, and not only the scenery or, or the fish that we were trying to catch, but the place that we were in in a whole, just being the Midwest, you know, it, 
if you travel around the U.S. in itself, each little section of the country has its different hospitality and it has its different culture. And it sounds funny because it's the U.S., but everywhere has its own culture and its own background and its own lineage of, of heritage from different places all over the world. And one thing I got to say about the Midwest, one, is the scenery is so unique. This place, the hardwoods, the river bottoms, the, the white-tailed deer, uh, all the wildlife that you see when you're in these areas is so unique compared to where I'm from in the Pacific Northwest. And then the second thing I say is probably the highlight of these areas like this anywhere in the Midwest from the Dakotas all the way east to, to Michigan and even further east is just the genuine kindness of the people. It's very unique. I don't really see that a lot in a lot of the places that we travel across the country. Just that, that genuine nice smile that you get from everybody you meet and every place you go and i have to say well done midwest because it's such an inviting place and if you guys haven't got the chance to travel out here and fish with any of these guys whether it be bailey whether it be kyle you need to check it out it is worth doing and it is worth seeing and the fishing and the, the variety of fish is unparalleled to anywhere else in the country well we made it one thing that can be extremely important this is a little fun fact i'm sure it's more common sense than anything but when you go on a long hike like that and you're going through the brush, especially in the Midwest like this for a lot of this, these woods and this, this brush you're walking through is super sharp and brittle. It's a lot of times going to mess up your leader line as you walk up river. So we're going with a, another brand new set up here, retying. We made it. Juicy. No, that was not your line. I don't know, dude. That, did you see that? I can feel it. I can feel it in my plums. The old munch, munch, munch. Speaking of munching. world it's looking like the walk might not have been worth it there's a couple of holes that we passed up coming up here but it was a long freaking walk it took us about an hour to walk all the way up here to this specific spot it's not posing to have a fish in it i don't really know what to do now i think there's some other options of places we can go but that's all part of the adventure and that's all part of the fun i think my favorite part of all this is just having you guys along for the ride and exploring these new places like this on foot I mean, there's a whole new element to actually walking up a river and getting to know an area and, and cutting through the woods and, and getting to really just be one with nature all day out here on the water. It's been an incredible day so far. One beautiful steelhead. We still have a lot of options. I'd love to get a big brown shot in my hands. Let's keep fishing. Oh, little brown? Little steely. Little steely. Sweet. Cute little dude. Little half pounder, eh? Oh, yeah. Nice, dude. That was a fishy bobber down. There's no way it wasn't one. Look, look, look what was behind it. Cool little fish. On a 10 mil bead. Beautiful. Count it. Yeah, that's a good start. You knew it. You knew it. I knew it. We knew there was going to be a fish there, world. And there was. I think I might switch away from the twitching jiggle back to the steelhead stuff. What are we doing here? Got a little surprise for you, boys. Well, dude, what the hell do we do tomorrow? I don't know, man. 
uh, we got option A, but it's going to be pretty skinny and a lot of getting out and pushing. Or option B with more people and less river miles. Right. Well, really, it's rather prevailing. If it's as cold as it was today, we're kind of screwed either way. So if we get a good warm up, we get the right conditions, we got a long float, but nothing worth doing is easy. We'll see what happens. We'll uh, wake up in the morning, make a little drive, and see what it looks like. Well, sounds good to me. How about you, America? Cheers. What makes this fish that we had in mind so iconic for catching a trophy brown trout is just the true beauty and the true gnarliness of how these fish look. Anybody out there who's chased brown trout all over the world, there is that one specific fish that people draw pictures of and people dream of and people post and put on their fridge or, or have as their profile picture on their Instagram. But it is the fish that you fish for and that's all I had in mind for day three, which wasn't gonna make it easy. So we hit the road early, we got to our first river and what do you know? Well, what do you think, dude? Should we leave it to fate and a coin flip? <laughs> I don't know, man. Should we go up river? Like, what do you want? What do you think we should? I think do? we should go up river and see what it looks like. And if it's slushy up there, go to option B. I feel ya. This is a long float today, you guys, and we're trying to decide whether or not it's worth it. When you're trying to find a trophy fish, we got one more fish on the list. What I just talked about. One more fish on the list that we want to get. It's been a perfect trip up till now. But trying to decide on this very last day where to go, there's two good options, but they're both not in premier condition. So, risk to reward, I guess. Let's go check it out. We're gonna go up river to the put-in, check out, see what the river looks like. If it doesn't look good, we're gonna make a game time decision and haul ass to a different place. So after we made our big move, it became quickly apparent that Mother Nature was not gonna be on our side today. The wind was howling, the ice was just breaking up, and honestly, it was a completely miserable fishing condition, but we were determined, and we had all day. We were gonna ride this one out till dark. Whoa, just rolled right on the bank there. See that? Yep. What the heck was that? <laughs> Follower, big follower, got it. Oh my god, it's okay, that's all right. It should be cool. That was cool. Woo, got the heart going, everybody. I thought it was a big old brown trout. Got a follower, big follower, got it. Oh my god, I got a chaser. What was that? That was a rock. Sorry. Big old pike, I literally stuck it in his mouth. That was the coolest thing ever. I saw him down there, I thought it might have been a brown, and I stuck the spinner in front of his face and he ate it. Wow. Whew. So neat, look at that thing. Big old gnarly pike. One more Midwest species off the list, dude. That was cool. Oh. Wow. There's some hellacious wind, man. Goodness gracious. What a tough fishing condition. Windy, cold as hell, tough biting fish. Icebergs everywhere. Icebergs. We're having to really earn this, but it feels good. Zone, everybody. Here's us. We're inside the zone. Over here is outside. Right now we are in the zone. Found the only spot on the river that was not blowing us around. We switched our floats. We're gonna get the only opportunity we have so far to really get a spawn sack in here with this slow moving water. That wind just destroys any drift. So fresh spawny, fresh hole, no wind. Fingers crossed everybody. Let's see. Fish, 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 got him, got him. 
Oh my god, right at the boat, addict. Right at the freaking boat. Holy crap. That was epic. Out of nowhere. Smoked it. Out of freaking nowhere. Oh man, this is an important one, you guys. This is an important one. It has been such a freaking grinder of a day. We have worked so hard. Probably driven 100 miles, fished, I don't know, 15 miles of river already. And finally, we have a fish on us. It's a steelhead, but that's okay. My first steely of the trip. Oh, oh, oh God, oh God, oh God. He's got a mind of his own. Oh my God, this fish can't be trusted. Holy shnikes. Here we go. We got him. It is unreal how spunky this thing is with that little bit of a warm up. Here we go. Come on. No, 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 no. Oh, oh God, he's, he's got a mind of his own. Woo, <laughs> brother. Oh, it came out in the net too. I got it. Holy shnikes. We earned that fish today. This fish is incredibly colored. Look at that thing. White fin tips, perfect red cheek. What a specimen, dude. What a blessing. Good work. And well another spinner fish. Just how I love it. Here we go. Give you guys one more look before we let him go. Just a crazy cool looking fish. Man, thank the creator for that one. That was a lot of work, but we did it. We did it. That's what hard work and persistence gets you, is a fish right at the end of the day. We still have river to go. This isn't the goldfish that we had today, but I am not complaining after a day like this. Well, thank you, little man. It's incredible how spunky this thing is. Oh yeah. 33 degree water, but just enough to keep this bad boy biting. See you later, man. Out of our lives and into our dreams. Yes. Well, addicts, day three is quickly coming to an end. We got just a few more casts left in us today. But what a challenge this has been. I think this was really like a monumental day for trophy hunting any kind of fish. Traveling this far, going this hard, and and being this cold and fighting the elements the whole time to try to look for that one fish of a lifetime really shows. It shows the effort that gets put into trying to make a video like this. One, and then two, just trying to catch that dream fish. It's, it's still a dream, it's still out there. And that's the beauty of it, is even though we had an amazing trip and we accomplished some awesome goals, there's still a reason to come back and to keep going for more and keep hunting. It's been an awesome journey so far. Be sure to drop some comments below and hit that thumbs up button if you guys have liked this journey out here to the Midwest. I know this has been a very memorable experience for me. And I'm really glad you guys are along for the ride. One more hole. So as day three came to a close, I really started to reflect and think about this trip as a whole and what it means to be chasing a trophy fish. Bailey put us on some incredible brown trout and I couldn't be more thankful for the fish that we caught. But the fact that we didn't catch the one that we had in mind, we caught the fish, but we didn't catch the one. And that is what trophy fishing is all about. I think that is why a lot of anglers, especially ones that have been fishing a long time, go and try to chase these trophy trout because they are some of the hardest fish in the world to catch. They're usually aged, they're, they're smart, They've been living in the river for a long time and they're hard to fish. We didn't fish for these fish when it was the easiest to catch them. We didn't fish when it was the warmest or when we could catch the most. But we decided to fish when we were catching the very biggest fish that we could possibly get. And that really showed in this video. But in hindsight, at the end of the day, I'm actually extremely happy with the way this trip went. Not catching that fish that I had in my dreams makes me even more driven to go out and chase that fish further and further and further into the unknown and see where it will take me trying to find that one fish of a lifetime. And truly, it's a lot to be said about what this sport is all about and what fishing is all about. And that is never giving up and never letting anything stand in the way of chasing a dream. I want to say thank you to the addicts so much for supporting our channel and for watching these videos. If you want to see more awesome content just like this one from the Midwest, go up here and click this link for this next video. Go down here, hit subscribe, please turn those bells on, hit that thumbs up and comment below and you can do the comment of the day just like this person right here. Thanks so much for watching everybody, you stay fishy, we'll see you out there.